Hello guys, this is Matrix Ray, and I'm showing you some resolution comparisons between native 1440p versus native PS2. I will also be doing some frame rate testing and show you guys the best settings for Spyro and to the Dragonfly. We are using large frame buffer, a custom resolution of 2560x1440p native, 16x the anisotrophic filtering, me mapping on automatic, full direct 3D recommended, and we are using nothing in advanced settings and hacks. At 16 times MSAA, it breaks this game, or even times two, it has a lot of graphical problems, at least with me, so I can't really show it off in this video. We are using texture filtering of display and FXAA shader as well. Bilinear PS2, Direct 3D, 11 hardware. I am using MTVU, if you have more than 3 cores, I have 6 cores, you can turn this on, makes the game run a lot faster, more consistent, which is good. I haven't really played this game with it off, so I can't tell how good it runs without it, but I'd recommend it anyway. I'm sure it runs pretty good anyway without it. Alright, the PS2 dimensions are 512 by 448 and the game ha uh, targets 30 frames and also 60 frames. I really gotta quickly explain what I mean by that. Now, for some reason, way back in 2002 when they made this, uh, the developers uh, did some sort of technique where uh, the game has like an, a dynamic uh, refresh rate implementation so it can go to 60 frames and it can drop down to 30 frames. Now, I will show this off in native uh, 1440p just very shortly but right now this is native PS2 as you see texture filtering seems to be bilinear if not trilinear if you look at the brickwork or the grass it's uh, a lot of aliasing plus the whole game has a lot of aliasing in general it's aged and um, as you see if I go to native 1440p the game looks a lot clearer which is really, really nice. In the distance, all the detail shows, and then if you look at the ground at an oblique angle, the game has a working 16 times the nicer traffic filtering as well, so it looks really good in angles, which I really appreciate. Now, I will show off this dynamic refresh rate. It feels inconsistent when I played from start to finish, but it, was, it still works, it's still playable. But as you see, this is a notorious area for flickering at between 30 and 60. This tunnel here runs at a nice 60 frames per second, but if you turn around into the uh, hub world, as you see, the refresh rate drops in half, the rate, but if you look at the frame count I have on the top left here, it's always going to stay at 60, it's because it's, it has nothing to do with uh, dropping frames, it's just a dynamic refresh rate drop, so it doesn't affect your, uh, doesn't really affect you besides the game itself and how it's built. But if we run over here, as you see, it's pretty much 60 frames the whole way through. And as you see, at native 1440p, which is the whole point of this video, is uh, to see how good it looks. It looks really, really nice at 1440p. So we'll have another look at native PS2. Here is native PS2 right here. There is native 1440p. Native PS2. Native 1440p. If you look at this tree right here, I will do it one more time. But you can see the loss of detail when I do that. But when I go back to 1440p, it is clear as day. You can see all the detail on the leaves and even the color as well. Now, but this area runs at 60 frames pretty well. But um, it's just a shame that there's a dynamic, uh, really aggressive dynamic refresh rate in this game, which actually later got patched in all of the other Spyro games. But for most of the time, it runs at 60. And it's if you're dropping frames on your system you either need a better cpu i have 3.33 gigahertz at six cores 12 threads so the game runs beautifully for me but that's basically about it thank you for watching